All right, boys and girls, we're doing a little tutorial as I haven't done a tutorial in a little bit. And things have changed a little in regards to how Insta360 Studio uh, and Final Cut Pro work and just some of the features, especially inside uh, Insta360 Studio, how they kind of function. So I'm going to be taking footage from both the Ace Pro, this is the Ace Pro 2, as well as my Insta360 X4. But this could be used with Go 3S footage, the older Insta360 cameras. It really doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, first thing that I always do in regards to this is I will simply just create a folder. And this could be something that you just put on your desktop or on an external. But I'm just going to call it uh, 360 footage to convert. Okay, nice and simple. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my SD card. So usually I do it off an SD card. And I'm going to put that over here inside the actual computer. And now if you're only importing off of one camera, you really don't need to make a folder or anything like that. You can just actually uh, do it all off the SD camera. But because I'm going to be using footage from an X4 and uh, the Ace Pro 2, uh, I'm going to put it in a folder so I can queue up everything. Because sometimes that conversion phase, especially if you have a lot of footage, can take a fair bit of time. So I don't necessarily want to have to come back after each camera and re-import footage. So I'm just going to dump it all into a card, which means I can do it all at once. So uh, camera number one, of course, has popped up here. So I'm just going to go into this. You'll see a bunch of footage. Uh, I'm going to click on date modified so you guys can see some of it. So if you look here, this is me in, in the slingshot. Yes, very good. So I'm simply going to just take a uh, handful of these. I'm just going to take two of them for now and I'm going to copy them into this here. And this should copy over. Yep, which is going. And see, these are these are big files, right? So I'm going to do that for both the X4 and I'm going to do it for the Insta360 uh, Ace Pro 2. And then once those are copied into those folders, we'll go from there. Okay, so we finished copying some files and I've got like three or four Ace Pro files in there. Uh, and I got some Insta360 X4 files in there as well. So basically, if we open up this folder, which I created, there's going to be all the files that are in there right now, which is great. Uh, after that, we're simply going to just open up our Insta360 Studio. You want to make sure that this is updated. It does have a lot of updates comes out, which is good. But just realize that you, sh you should do them. I always check this every once in a while just to see if there are any updates. Uh, so I'm just going to come over here open up that folder, highlight all these, and I'm gonna simply on the Mac here, just drag this over. That should open, do this. It's gonna load all the gyro data, so depending on the files, how big they are, this part can take a little bit of time, but I do find that it's faster coming off, let's say, your uh, internal or external SSD than if it's coming off your SD card. So just in general, if you have the time to move it onto a faster media, then the whole process can be quicker. Okay, so now that it's all there, sitting on the computer here, you'll see this is some Insta360 H Pro 2 footage. Same here, uh, a bunch of that. But you can see visually when you get the 360 footage, right? Because you get this really wide screen. Now, if you wanted to, you know, you could open one of these up and you could go through here and do all the keyframing. Now, I'm not going to do all that on this video because I really want to show you guys how I do it with Final Cut. So I don't do any keyframing or anything like that in here. I use basically Insta360 Studio to run all the flow state stuff. Also be able to just make sure my bit rates are nice and high, et cetera, et cetera. But you could easily come in here just so you guys can see, right? You can see all the stuff you can do, your color plus, your clarity plus. If you want to turn that on, you got your exposure highlights, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, your screen processing, uh, all, all kinds of stuff that you can do in here as well as your audio modes. If you wanted to be able to have voice focus or noise reduction, you can come in and put a time watermark on there if you want. Uh, none of this stuff for me is really that important because I use this program for, like I said, one purpose and one purpose only is to get that footage kind of processed so that Final Cut can actually work with it properly. So uh, when we have these open, I'm gonna do this in kind of two processes. So. For instance, I'm just going to use these clips down here. So uh, I'm going to use actually this one here and this one here. So I'm going to just use my command key to highlight both of them. Then I'm going to right click on either one of them, say start export. 
this will come up like the batch exporting. I'm going to do it locally. Uh, I'm going to change this so that it actually, uh, actually, yeah, we'll put it into the 360 folder here. Actually, we, yeah, 360, because this is the stuff that's the originals. This is, so I'm going to have a second folder created. You guys should do that, uh, which this is going to go. So I'm going to hit open. Um, bit rate quality, I'm going to come here and hit custom, and I'm going to just crank this up because, again, I want this to be as high quality as possible. And for me, if you want the highest possible, you're going to want to go to ProRes, but the files are going to be absolutely bonkers in size. So I usually just go to H.265. I like that. You get good quality for the file size that you get. Um, if it's a really dark shot that maybe you didn't shoot uh, in pure video mode or something like that, you may want to do remove grain. I don't necessarily do that. I, I think that the files that come out of this should be fine. And I'm going to simply just, once those are there, I'm going to hit add to queue. You can actually see up here that you're going to have two files in the actual queue that are waiting. So we're going to close that. Uh, then I'm going to go down to the 360 shot. So I only have the one right there, which is one I just shot in the room. Same idea. If I wanted to, I could open this up and play around with this clip so that I could 16 by 9 it or 9 by 16 or whatever, but I'm not going to. Right? You'll see here I can actually put keyframes and spin this around and, and ignore the the smudge on the actual lens. I use it outside motorcycle riding so it gets dirty because it's caught in the rain and stuff like that. And I haven't had a chance to clean it. Anyways, most of the time you and I are probably not going to have one clip. We may have, you know, three clips, 20 clips or whatever. Same idea. We're going to right click, start export. Uh, same idea for me though. I'm going to switch this now to 360 video because I wanted to stay in that 360 format. Uh, it's going to the same spot bit rate wise. I'm cranking it all the way up. This is a 60 frame. So that's perfect. Again, I'm switching this to H265. This one here has the ability to actually export in Dolby Vision. So I'm going to say yes to that. I'm going to add this back to the queue. And again, we come up here now. There's the four of them. So all I'm going to do now is hit start. And uh, I'm going to wait. This is a great time to uh, do something else, right? Because uh, depending on how fast your computer is, will depend on how long this process takes. These aren't crazy long clips, but they definitely are computer intensive. So uh, I'm going to uh, go maybe watch some TV while this is happening. I'll be I'll be right back. All right, guys. So this has finished. Uh, as you can see here, my expert queue is done. So we can close out all this now. And we're simply going to open up Final Cut here. So Final Cut's going to open. We're going to create a, a new uh, project for this, new event to put the footage in. And I'll show you how this works. So I'm just going to get this screen bigger. And we're simply going to come in here. My untitled here. We're going to go to File. And we're going to uh, make a new event. Okay. And I don't, you know, I'm just going to call it uh, 360 tutorial. Okay, very good. Uh, 4K for me, this is what I work in, 4K 23, uh, 24 frame basically. Uh, I'm going to get it to create a new project. I'll name that later, but make sure you name it because if you are putting this up on YouTube, the name of the video can actually help a little bit. Okay, so we got that 360 tutorial event made with the untitled. Uh, I do recommend, you know, that you should name this, especially if you have multiple projects going at the same time, because I, I have done this where I end up editing and I realize it's in the wrong project. But for me right now, we only have one project. We're good. Uh, we're going to come in here and do our little import. So it automatically, since this was probably the last place I imported from, found it. But make sure you click on that. Highlight your clips. Make sure it's going into the right area here. So yes, I have it set up my 360 tutorial. I'm going to have it set to copy to the library. These are just ones that I actually have. It's up to you which ones you want to do. I'm going to hit import. Now for me, because I actually have uh, unsupported file type, okay? That's weird. Actually, so for whatever reason, one of them decided to screw up on me, which is fine um, for now. Anyways, we do have the two clips here. So instead of the third, I'll have to figure out what went wrong with that other one. Um, these... Uh, we're simply going to, I'm just going to drag these in. So I'm going to use E to drag these into the timeline. Okay. And for me, you'll notice that I actually shoot in four by three with the Ace Pro as well as with the Go 3S. So because of that, I have a lot more room to play with the top and the bottom. So simply, if you want to be able to play with those, for me, all I do is I come in here. Of course, I'm going to scale this up so that I can get it where I want. Uh, which means that for some reason, if I was back here, Right, I'm walking around. I could be like, okay, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to 
keyframe that word is. Yeah, good, good, good. I come into the car, very nice. Uh, for some reason, let's say I was gonna start talking here about something else. I'm gonna again keyframe this. And let's say I wanna look, go lower. I can actually just move this down. Let's say I wanted to see something that's down here in my crotch area, right? I could hit done. And between, of course, those two, right? You'll actually see that the camera will slowly just kind of pan down, which is why I like to actually have that uh, pan, that four by three mode, so that I can actually do things like this. It just, it doesn't take away from the width. It just gives you more on the top and the bottom. So if you're at all worried about, you know, having something that maybe you didn't get in the shop properly, you want to be able to move around, you can. So if can I can now put another one here if I wanted, you know, keyframe this one, perfect. Come ahead a couple more frames, put another keyframe, right? I might even want to just move that so it sees it. And then I can come over here and be like, okay, now I want to come back up to this area here. Right, great, done. And through that area there, now you'll see it slowly pan back up to where I want this to actually be which is cool, right? And let's say that was enough. So I say, cool, then I can just shrink this file down to what I need. Excellent. Now, the difference here is this is the 360 footage, right? So inside 360 footage, same idea. We are gonna come here, but now we'll actually have a 360 orientation button. So all we do is you click on that, which now allows me to move this around, right? So I can focus on, let's say here, if I wanted to, right? Cool, I could be like, yeah, love it. Keyframe that just the way it is. It says okie dokie. Then I can move to another spot here. And let's say I wanted to talk more about me so I could come up here, but I realize I'm too zoomed in. So at this point in time, I'm literally just gonna come up to that field of view, which is where I can move in and out. So I can zoom it back, zoom it forward, whatever, get this kind of where I want it. I want to make I want the mic in the shot a little bit, done. And now between these two clips, right? You can actually see not only does it move, but it does a nice little zoom out. So we can have that moving around in there, which is why I like to have that control inside Final Cut instead of having that control inside Insta360 Studio. Because, right, if I did it all in Insta360 Studio, exported it all, and then realized that for whatever reason I wanted to change that, I'd have to, I'd have to go back into Insta360, re-edit it again, re-export it again, re-import it again, and then work here to get it to what I want and hope that it's right. But because it's here, I can easily go in and I can remove keyframes, I can add new ones. You know, I can come in here and be like, oh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow myself, move over to the side, right? So I come in here, I'm like, okay. So at this point in time, uh, we're just gonna come back in here, orientation, right? Good. Uh, I move over to the right here a little bit. So I'm like, yep, yeah, so let's let's bring me centered again over in this area, but I'm also going to you know, zoom in on my face a little bit. So I'm a little closer into that area, done. And then now, you know, we have this that will actually start to move over to where I was. So as I start to walk, now this is just a rough, of course, I probably would have cut it a little later, but here is, here's my move. I come into the shot, it's perfect, you know, it's just way nicer to do it, I find, inside Final Cut Pro. And then when you're done, you can just export this as just a traditional video. Now, if you wanted to, you could also um, create a new project here, for instance, a new project. Uh, and if you wanted to actually put a 360 video up into uh, YouTube, for instance, you could come here and actually say that this is gonna be an actual 360 video leave it as it is normally for me because i shoot this but sometimes i actually punch it up a little bit i'll put it up like this so that uh it gets seen on youtube so i'll just crank it right up and then in that aspect again i'll just put that here you could put multiple 360 clips now don't add necessarily a standard clip in this this has to be full 360 but you could put 360 clips back to back to back to back to back and then when you go to export this same kind of thing you just export it i usually export it as this high efficiency video it's going to send it out it has all the proper tags in it already so that when youtube gets it now realize when youtube gets it uh, it can take with 360 video it can take a day or two uh, i've had it take that much maybe even longer for it to actually encode and get that that video into 360 mode so you know don't 
upload it and publish it right away because it's going to look like absolute garbage. But if you can upload it, put it as unlisted or put it as private or whatever it is, let it sit for a couple days before you put it into public, then you should get a nice, a nice 360 uh, video on, on YouTube. All right, guys, that's kind of my workflow for using Insta360 cameras, uh, especially, you know, the Ace Pro as well as the X4 or any of the Insta360 360 cameras. That all should work really nice. And of course, I use both the Insta360 Studio app as well as Final Cut Pro to kind of get my, my result. All right, if you have any questions at all or you'd like possibly a deeper dive into Insta360 Studios app, let me know in the comments below and uh, I will I, I'll work on that because because I love you guys. All right, my friends, that's it for today. I'll see you next video. Later.